G'day and welcome to Barney's Daily Devotionals. We've been working through the fabulous letter of 2 Peter and we've seen some amazing things already and how Peter's laying the groundwork for us to have confidence and to, he's, he's laid a sure foundation for us in order to face the problems of life. And he's going to start getting into the problems today. There's problems inside the church and there's problems that the church faces from outside. And chapter two is about the internal struggle. Chapter three is about the external struggle as we wait for Jesus to come. What's the foundation we've seen? Well, Paul's, uh, sorry, Peter's prayed for us uh, for God's grace and peace to guard us and be with us and might be multiplied in us. He's helped us to understand that there's nothing that can get in our way, that God's power has given us everything that we need in order to face these obstacles and to keep going. He's talked about what we need to add to our faith to make sure that we're fruitful and productive for God's kingdom. And as we make our calling and election sure, and uh, we can be guaranteed that welcome home of good and faithful servant. And we've seen that it's not myths that it's all based on, that it's true. It's the word of eyewitnesses to the glory of Jesus, those who saw him. But also we saw how it's the fulfillment of the hundreds, thousand years or so of prophecy that God made. And so we can know for certain the gospel is true. Jesus is the king and that he wins. And that's that's the foundation we need to help us to face the struggles that we're about to uh, well, be described. Particularly today, we get into the internal struggles. Let's pray and we'll get into God's word. Father, thank you that you warn us about the difficulties that we face and are likely to face as individual Christians and as your church. And we pray today as we see the attacks from inside your church, you'll help us to be wise about it, to know that it's real and to know how to be on our guard. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in 2 Peter chapter 2 and he's looking at the attacks inside the church. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. There were indeed false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, and will bring swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved ways, and the way of truth will be maligned because of them. They will exploit you in their greed with made-up stories. Their condemnation pronounced long ago is not idle, and their destruction does not sleep. He's going to go on in the next part of the passage to to start looking at examples from history of the false prophets who were there and others that come. And then he will move on to what it is that these people are asserting. But he's making us aware right now that just as in the history of Israel, as is today, that there's always going to be attacks with inside the church that come from false teachers. False teaching is something that's not insignificant, it's not unexpected, it's not minor, it's a massive problem that God, through the, the Bible, uh, the Lord Jesus taught there would be false shepherds and then the rest of the New Testament keeps exposing them over and over again in the early church and keeps warning that this is something we always need to be on our guard against. It's a problem that just will not go away because new false teachers, new heresies are going to come up all the time. Some of the, the repeats of the old ones that keep coming back and others are uh, new and novel, but we keep having to face things and go back to the short foundation and say what is it that's not the myth the cleverly invented myth but the the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and it's why Peter has been setting up that sure foundation we've been looking at and giving us confidence that actually these things don't need to distract us destroy us break God's church they will be there and there will be people who listen but if you're well grounded in the things he's talked about and knowing with certainty the confidence of God's power that he's given us everything that the Lord Jesus wins, uh, well, you'll be kept safe. But it's something you need to work at and be aware of. And he says, well, it's something that's new and old. There were false prophets among the people of Israel, just as there will be among you. And what does he say about their, their false teaching? He calls them heresies. That is, they are uh, not consistent with the truth. They are... Um, distortions uh, and he says they're destructive they're bringing destructive heresies 
uh, these heresies are not insignificant. They, they do really matter. Heresy is not just, oh, well, that's your opinion, this is my opinion, and we've got slightly different views. Heresy are those things which deny the foundations of the faith that actually compromise uh, the teaching of the Lord Jesus. And you see some of them named through the scriptures in the, in the life of the church. Jesus uh, talks about the the yeast of the Pharisees and the scribes, that's their false teaching that relies on human efforts and works, on the traditions of people rather than on the grace of God. We, we stay, see in Galatians that, that, that there's that push from inside the church to always go back to the Old Testament and to Judaism in order to be Christian, that you need to be circumcised, you need to do this and you need to do that. You need to have food restrictions of not just what you eat, but who you eat with. Uh, there's heresies around Gnosticism of people who come with secret knowledge. I've got this secret thing that's not, it's not there written in the text, but I can introduce it to you, that you really need to know the truth about God and that the, the words of the Bible are just covering up. There's one John warns about there. In Colossians, there's the false worship of angels. There's all kinds of spiritual movements, works-based religious systems, all kinds of things that are such bad distortion that they are destructive heresies that people who listen to them fall into them will be destroyed they will end up in hell they will join again the broad road that leads to destruction and move away from the grace and the peace that's only found in the lord jesus and his saving work notice that these false teachers who bring in destructive heresies even deny the master who bought them that's an intriguing verse for a lot of reasons, uh, not least because of one of the debates in the modern church, well, ever since the Reformation really is, and still going on today, is the question of, um, well, we know that Jesus died for sins, uh, but how many sins did he die for? And there's this massive debate amongst Reformed evangelicals about whether his blood is only enough to pay for the sins of those who God chooses ahead of time to be saved. I mean, election's a great thing, and it's a wonderful blessing that's in the Scriptures uh, that we need to have confidence. So, but if that's the case, well, then Jesus only just pay enough for them so that you can't say to a non-believer who you don't know if they're elect or not well i'm not sure if jesus died for you so you can't say jesus died for you because well maybe he didn't that would be a lie uh, some elements of the church want to say that others would say of course he died for everyone some will go so far as to say well and that blood covers everyone that's not right that's uh, certainly denied in the scriptures because there's the saved and not saved i mean here's people introducing destructive heresies destroying themselves and they're here is and so they're not saved so that can't be the way but then others will say well here's the answer that the scriptures come up with well jesus blood is enough for anyone but so it's sufficient but it's only effective for those who are chosen who will one day believe who god grants repentance and faith to uh, they will come and so jesus blood's enough uh, for everyone and uh, but it's only effective for those who are god's people uh, and you can see that this verse here talks about that. Here's people who are going to destruction who have been bought by the master. And so they've been paid for, but they've rejected that payment. And so you can see that this verse here just clarifies that, that Jesus' blood is sufficient for all, but only effective or efficient for some. And these people are bringing swift destruction on themselves and many will follow them into that destruction. And so here is the gateway into hell uh, from within the church that false teaching that brings destructive of the person is also copied followed believed chased after by those who come after them and also notice that not just does it destroy many people but the way of truth will be maligned because of them and you think about the way when false teachers are often exposed because false teachings never isolated from sin uh, and you see the the exposure recently of uh, some very uh, famous church leaders uh, particularly uh, in, within Hillsong and inspired churches and uh, in other denominations I mean it happens elsewhere as well um, and Anglicans what's happening in England at the moment in the Church of England is absolutely disgraceful uh, the pride movement that's taken place 
Uh, there's now uh, trans archdeacons in the Church of e uh, England, uh, and it's it's all depraved. And uh, people malign the truth because of them. They start poo-pooing Christianity. They they poo-poo it. The, you know, classic biblical Christianity for two reasons. One because, well, firstly because they kind of go, well, this new sort of Christianity, that's our sort of Christianity. So those conservatives, they're dumb, evil, stupid. Uh, and look, here's a progressive Christianity that we can all embrace and that we all want to embrace. The trouble is no one actually embraces it. Those churches are emptying because they're offering nothing that the world doesn't already have. And so why go to those churches? Uh, but in the end, that's also maligned because People just don't um, disconnect. You know, people call themselves Christians and say, well, they're Christians and they're Christians. And you see these Christians doing evil uh, and saying stupid, wrong things. Well, of course, you know, that, that's going to rub off on the reputation of the rest of the church. And so the Muslim world looks on at the Christianity and sees the depravity in England and sees the adultery of ministers and so on and it says, see, Christianity is no good, it's no good, it's wrong, it's evil, it doesn't change anything. Uh, they're all hypocrites and liars because we're all tarred with the same brush. And so the way of truth is maligned in both ways. One by those who just want to get into bed and go with them and those who want to stand arrogantly against and say, well, all those Christians are the same. Either way, this destructiveness of the heresies uh, causes the way of truth to be maligned. Notice why they are doing this. They will exploit you in their greed. What is it that they want? Well, they're hungry for something. They're hungry for the wrong things, not for the praise of God, not for the welcome home, well done, good and faithful servant. They're hungry for money. They're hungry for hearts. They're hungry for fame. They're hungry for popularity. Uh, and it's this greed that's all self-centered and all about them getting ahead and looking amazing and living amazing lives of richness and prosperity. You see Joyce Meyer's mansions. You see how the archdeacons are living it up in England and so on, the parties and the, 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 everything that goes ahead, the pomp and the ceremony. You see it in uh, the uh, the mega churches, even in Australia, the way the um, uh, the pastors driving are in their luxury vehicles with their multiple homes, and uh, right, and so they exploit. That's what they're there to do. That's why these teachers come, and they're very successful at it, uh, destroying themselves in the process, destroying those who hear them, and causing the way of truth to be maligned. And how do they how do they do it? Well, they make up stories. They will exploit you in their greed with made-up stories. They start inventing a new sort of Christianity, whether it's the prosperity gospel of the Pentecostal movement, whether it's the uh, liberal gospel that there are no miracles that Jesus didn't really say and do anything. Actually, he's, he's a resurrected but only in their hearts. He didn't come back to life, whether it's um, the Gnostic gospel that I've got this secret relationship with God that only people who listen to what I say um, uh, can can have and the rest of them aren't real Christians uh, they, they're made up stories there's uh, Barbara Thiering with her Pasha technique explaining why the events of the Bible really aren't about Israel and so on they're about a tiny little village of the Essenes and how they named the Jordan River the creek that ran through the middle of the team and Jesus walked on what it means he stepped over the creek uh, they, like, they make up all sorts of things all to escape this plain reading of scripture which is our sure foundation and they have to make it up because um, no one's going to go with them and they're not going to be able to exploit people with the truth because the truth doesn't lead to exploitation it leads to love right people loving God with their heart soul mind and strength of loving their neighbor as themselves as they come and say come and find peace with your heavenly father through the Lord Jesus Christ the good news is verse 3 at the end there their condemnation was pronounced long ago God's always been aware of this and always said he's not going to tolerate it. He's going to do something like it. And so God is not idle and their destruction does not sleep. Their end will come, whether in their life as their sins are exposed and it's all brought to uh, public awareness and brought the empire's collapse, 
or whether in the long run that God on judgment day will expose their evil deeds, those who've gone um, uh, unpunished in this life, it's always going to come. Their judgment is not idle. God is not sleeping. God is not unaware. And so we do not need to fear. We've got to be on our guard and we've got to keep on with the sure foundation and of being praying that the grace and peace to be multiplied in us, of knowing that God's given us everything we need to resist, uh, adding to our faith all that list of things from the middle of chapter one, um, you know, adding to our faith goodness, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, and brotherly affection and love. Uh, they are things that will just make us fruitful and productive and will help us see through the lies and keep on with the scriptures knowing that it's not made up myths, ill conceived. We're going to listen to God and we're going to check everything that the scriptures say. And when people say, well, let me tell you what I think it means and how I'm going to introduce this other thing, always read the context, always ask the hard questions and make sure it's right because you don't want to be seduced away. It's such a destructive thing that God is warning us about and calling us to take action and be guard against, but also not to despair over because God knows it's happening and God will do something about it. We'll be more on that tomorrow, uh, sorry, uh, as in our next devotion, because uh, it's Friday, we're going to be getting to uh, our Sunday service and then back for more work into Peter in our devotions as they continue. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you warn us of the realities that there are problems in the church, that there are false teachers who have come and will come and will continue to come. And so we pray that we will be on our guard. Help us to keep on the sure foundation that you've given us in the Lord Jesus to be growing in our faith, getting into your word, knowing the truth of it, uh, not being led astray by myths and things that are made up but by sticking to the truth about the Lord Jesus, help us to keep productive in our faith and keep growing in it. Uh, and so we pray, please, where there are false teachers amongst us at the moment that you would drive them out, you would expose their lies and their heresy and their, their evil. And we do pray that you will continually be purifying your church. Help us to always be examining ourselves and for those of us who are teachers to examine ourselves and make sure we keep following the truth and to be repenting of the old ways without you and the things that we've made up along the way. And we pray, please, that you will grow us all and help us to be firm in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for Church Sunday and then back for another devotion later.